Welcome back. We are still on the topic statistics. In the previous video, we learned how to find the mean of a set of numbers. In this video, we are going to learn how to find the mean from an ungrouped frequency distribution table. Mean from an ungrouped frequency distribution table. From an ungrouped frequency distribution table, the mean which is represented by x with a bar on top of it is equal to sigma fx divided by sigma f. Sigma means sum of, so it means that the mean is equal to sum of fx divided by sum of f. The f values are the frequencies and the x values are the max. So to get the mean, we will find the sum of the product of f and x and then divided by the sum of f. Let's apply this to a question. Let's consider this question. The table below shows the score of 15 students in a biology test. So we have the scores and the number of students who scored each one of them. Find the mean score. To do this, we will draw a table with three columns. The first column will be for the scores, and that will be the x values. And the second column will be for the frequencies, that will be the f values. We have learned that the mean is equal to the sum of fx divided by the sum of f. Before we can get the sum of fx, we first have to find fx. fx will be the product of f and x, and that will be in this column. So the third column will be for fx. To get the first one, we will multiply the first f value by the first x value. The first f value is 2, and the first x value is 2. So 2 times 2 will give us 4. We do the same thing here. 4 times 3 will give us 12. Then the next one will be 5 times 4, which is 20. The next one is 3 times 5, which is 15. And the last one is 1 times 6, which is 6. So we now have the fx values. We want sigma fx, that is the sum of fx, to get that we will add all the fx values. So we have 4 plus 12 plus 20 plus 15 plus 6. And that will give us 57. So sigma fx is 57. We need sigma f. That is the sum of the f values. So we will add all the f values. 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 3 plus 1. And that will give us 15. So it means that the mean score will be equal to sigma fx, which is 57, divided by sigma f, which is 15. And this will give us 3.8. So it means that the mean score is 3.8. Let's consider another example. The frequency table below shows the ages of pupils in a class. So we have the ages here and their corresponding frequencies. Calculate the mean age. Correct your answer to the nearest whole number. As we did in the previous example, we will draw a table with three columns. The first column will be for the age, and that will be the x values. The second column will be for the frequencies. That will give us the f values. And the last column will be the fx values. The mean is sigma fx divided by sigma f. So we first have to find the fx values. That is the product of f and x. So the first one will be 10 times 14, which is 140. The next one will be 35 times 15, which is 525. The next one is 7 times 16, which is 112. The next one is 5 times 17, which is 85. 
and the last one is 3 times 18 which is 54. To get sigma fx it means we have to add all the fx values so we have 140 plus 525 plus 112 plus 85 plus 54 and that will give us 916. We need sigma f, so we add all the f values. That will be 10 plus 35 plus 7 plus 5 plus 3. And that is 60. So the mean will be equal to 916 divided by 60. And this will give us 15.3. But remember the question said we should correct our answer to the nearest whole number when we correct 15.3 to the nearest whole number we are going to have 15 so it means that the mean age is 15 years let's consider another question if the mean of the data below is 3.8 find the value of m so we have x values and f values and among the f values we have a variable m the question is telling us that the mean of this data is 3.8 we should use this information to find the value of m as usual we will draw our table with three columns as you can see here with the x values in the first one the f values in the second one and the fx values will be in the third one. The mean is given by sigma fx divided by sigma f. So let's first find the fx values. 1 times 1 will give us 1. 4 times 2 will give us 8. 3 times 7 will give us 21. m times 4 will give us 4m. 6 times 5 will give us 30. And 3 times 6 will give us 18. As we have been doing all along, after finding the fx values, we have to add all of them to get sigma fx. So you have 1 plus 8 plus 21 plus 4m plus 30 plus 18. From algebra, we know that this will give us 4m plus 78 because 1 plus 8 plus 21 plus 30 plus 18 will give us 78. So, sigma fx will be equal to 4m plus 78. We need sigma f, so we add all the f values. 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus m plus 6 plus 3. And this will give us m plus 21. Because 1 plus 4 plus 7 plus 6 plus 3 will give us 21. So, sigma f is equal to m plus 21. So, this means that the mean is equal to sigma fx, which is 4m plus 78, divided by sigma f, which is m plus 21. The question told us that the mean is 3.8. So 3.8 is equal to 4m plus 78 divided by m plus 21. This is a linear equation. So we solve this linear equation for the value of m. To do that, we will multiply the right hand side by m plus 21. And then we will multiply the left-hand side also by m plus 21. You see that m plus 21 and m plus 21 will cancel each other out. And so we will be left with 3.8 times m plus 21. But because m plus 21 is a binomial, we will put that in the brackets. So we have 3.8 into brackets m plus 21 is equal to 4m plus 78. We open the bracket here. 3.8 times m will give us 3.8m. 3.8 times 21 will give us 79.8. And this will be equal to 4m plus 78. We group like terms. 
you have 3.8m minus 4m is equal to 78 minus 79.8. 3.8m minus 4m is equal to negative 0.2m. 78 minus 79.8 is negative 1.8. So we have negative 0.2m is equal to negative 1.8. To find m, we will divide both sides by negative 0.2. So we will divide the left hand side by negative 0.2 and we divide the right hand side also by negative 0.2. So negative 0.2 and negative 0.2 will cancel. And so m will be equal to negative 1.8 divided by negative 0.2, which is 9. So the value of M in this distribution is 9. Thank you for watching this video. Subscribe to this channel for more videos. In this video, we learned how to find the mean from an ungrouped frequency distribution table. In the next video, we are going to learn how to find the mean from a grouped frequency distribution table. Bye-bye.